فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're still in the explanation of the book ثلاثة الأصول written by شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى We were speaking about in our last lesson الخوف فيها and we mentioned that الخوف is درجات is levels and the first level we gave الخوف فيها was الخوف من مكر الله تعالى to be scared of Allah تبارك وتعالى's plans today inshallah تعالى we're going to finish off that point الخوف من مكر الله and we're going to mention the other levels of fear there are so inshallah ta'ala I'm going to finish off الخوف من مكر الله one narration to show you Sayyid al-Khalq the master of the children of Adam Imam al-Sidq the truthful prophet of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala لا يأمن مكر الله he doesn't find safety from Allah's plans سبحانه وتعالى and Allah's punishments في الصحيحين بخاري المسلم both narrated من حديث عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها from our mother عائشة زوج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the wife of the prophet أنها قالت she said ما رأيت رسول الله I never saw the messenger of Allah مستجمعا ضاحكا I never saw the messenger of Allah one who gathers and laughs I never saw him عليه الصلاة والسلام إنما كان the prophet was one يبتسم who would only smile and you all know my beloved brothers and sisters Narrations actually come and they say فَضَحِكَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ حَتَّى بَذَتْ نَوَاجِدُهُ That the Prophet ﷺ laughed until his molar teeth could be seen. Why would the companions mention that his molar teeth could be seen? Is because it wasn't often that it happened. He wouldn't laugh like that. So they had to mention that when it did happen. Majority of the times the Prophet would only smile عليه الصلاة والسلام. So this is, hadith is very powerful because when you're outside, you may be in a different way. And you might carry yourself in a different way. But when you're at home, sometimes you may, you know, be loose. And, 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 and you, know, you know, you may enjoy yourself more. And you all know the famous hadith of Hamdallah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That when we're with you, O Messenger of Allah, our iman is high, we're focused. But when we go to our wives and our children, you know, iman reduces. But when your wife says that you are one who doesn't laugh, that you're serious all the time and that you're focused. Just like our mother Aisha saying about the Prophet of Allah, that he wasn't one who laughed. She says he was one who smiled. Alayhi salatu wasalam. It shows the, ser- the the characteristics and the way that the believer should hold himself. Oh Allah, give us these characteristics and make us ones who come with it. Qalat Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, وَكَانَ إِذَا رَأَ غَيْمًا أَوْ رِيحًا Allahu Akbar. The Messenger of Allah was one if he saw a cloud, meaning if the sky became cloudy or it, be, it became a bit windy. It would become clear on his face. The expression on the Prophet's face would be apparent that it is that he's not feeling normal. If he saw a cloud, and of course, what he means by this is when the cloud comes together and it looks like it's going to rain. Or it becomes a bit windy. فقالت عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها she said يا رسول الله أو messenger of Allah أرى الناس إذا رأوا الغيم فرحوا. What I saw was that when the people see the clouds, they get happy, they get excited. رجاء يكون في المطر. Maybe there's rain in this. 
maybe there's rain in this remember these people are living in the middle of the desert rain is what their life stock is based on and I see you O messenger of Allah when you see the cloud I see from your face dislike you don't feel comfortable قالت عائشة then said فقال رسول الله the messenger of Allah said to her يا عائشة أو عائشة ما يؤمنني what gives me safety أن يكون فيه عذاب that there's no punishment in it what safety do I have and guarantee that in this rain that's coming down that I'm going to be safe from it and it's not going to be a punishment what assurance do I have of that قد عذب قوم بالريح a group of people were destroyed with the wind وقد رأى قوم العذاب and a group of people saw the punishment of Allah فقالوا they said هذا عارض ممطرنا and they said this is a cloud it's only going to bring us rain he's talking about فلما رأوه عارضا مستقبل أوديتهم قالوا هذا عارض ممطرنا بل هو ما استعجلتم به ريح فيها عذاب أليم people of Ad Allah is talking about them when they disobeyed Allah and they went against his command and then they saw the cloud they said هذا عارض ممطرنا oh this oh it's a cloud it's only going to bring us rain but Allah says to them بل هو ما استعجلتم به Rather, it is what you guys have hastened and put forward. فيها عذاب أليم. It's a wind that's brought for you guys destruction. So the messenger of Allah, he clearly says to his beloved wife Aisha, ما يؤمنني what gives me safety أن يكون فيه عذاب. If Rasulullah is saying he can't find safety and no guarantee, then how could you think to yourself as a believer and say to yourself, and have confidence in yourself that you are safe and there's nothing to worry about. That if somebody advises you and tells you that this is wrong, don't do it. Destruction is in it for you. You're in trouble. This, this, this is a major sin. It leads you to the hellfire. This sort of punishment is what you can encounter. As a person, you should be so happy and take that on board. And you should not actually become arrogant and hard-headed and stubborn from it. The reason is because you know there's no safety from Allah's plans. And you know when Allah wa ta'ala wants to bring a punishment, He will bring it subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're at a time when al-asaf is shadeed. We're at a time when people just love positivity. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be positive. La shakka we should be. But it's just as though the people don't like to be told what's wrong. People just want to hear good things. People just want to hear positivity. And these narrations bring to our head and remind us, ma yu'aminuni the rain in and within itself is a positive thing and it is something that a person would especially in the middle of the desert in that kind of lifestyle it's something that you find as an individual positivity from it it's rain it's going to bring you crops it's going to be grass it's going to be green livestock zakat is going to come out from it the prophet is going to get this money and it's going to go to the muslimin and the army he could look at all of that but he's trying to remind him of the true essence of life that a person has to live with two things Al Khawf wa Raja. Those two have to be balanced. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm not going to speak about Al Raja hope. But this one, inshallah ta'ala, is to speak about fear. So I just wanted to say that if the Messenger of Allah, Khayru Khalqillah, Sayyidu Waladi Adam, the best of creation, the best man whose leg has ever touched the face of this earth, alayhi salatu salam, does not think to himself and does not believe he can find safety from Allah's plans then you and I and anyone like us or anyone better than us will never be able or shouldn't be able to find safety from Allah Ta'ala's plan. So that point we finished, al khawfu min makri to be safe from Allah Ta'ala's plan. We're now going to move on to the second one which is al khawfu min su al khatima to find safety to find safety from an evil ending. Oh sorry, to be scared. Al khawfu to be scared, min su il khatima, to be scared of an evil ending. So the first one was what al khawfu, min makrillahi to be scared of Allah's plans. This one is al khawfu min su il khatima to be scared of an evil ending. 
this one, my beloved brothers, which is al min su il khatima. Lagad mazzaka had a no. This type, this particular second one, it actually it destroyed, it ripped the hearts of the righteous people, the truthful one, the pious individuals. Qulubu salihin, wa qulubu nabiyin wa mursalin, and the hearts of the prophets and the messengers. This one, suul khatima. It brought their their hearts to rip. Fahahu and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the messenger of Allah. Nabi Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al Imam al Bukhari narrated in his Sahih. Min hadithi Kharija ibn Zayd ibn Thabit. Wa fihi an in it is. And now, Lama mata Uthman ibn Mabdoun. Uthman ibn Mabdoun when he died. As you all may know, as Imam al Dhabi mentioned in Sirah Alam ibn Bala. Uthman ibn Mabdoun, he was min Sadatil Muhajirin. He was from the most noble muhajirin. And he was min awliya illahi al-muttaqin. And he was from the greatest allies of Allah, wa ta'ala, pious individual. This life, he received the, right, the, 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 the chance and the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praying on his salah, his janazah. And he was the first individual to have been buried in Baqi'ah. And it was said that, or it was, what a person who what? Who participated in the battle of Badr. And this alone yakfihi sharafan is sufficient for him, honor. And shahida Badran, that he participated in the battle of Badr. The people who Allah said to them, I'malu ma shi'tum, do whatever you guys want, Ahlul Badr. If'alu ma shi'tum, faqad ghafartu lakum. Allah said to the people of Badr, do whatever you wish. Do whatever you want. I have forgiven you. He's, he gained that right and that status and that position. Pay attention. Qalat ummul ala'i, a female companion, who was a woman, imra'atu min al-ansari, a woman from the people of Ansar, who gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a pay, pledge of allegiance. Qalat ummul ala'i, ummul ala'i, she said, Imra'atu min al-Ansari, she was a woman from the people of Ansar, who gave bay'ah to the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, radiyallahu ta'ala anha. She said, Rahmatullahi alayka abu sa'ibi, abu sa'ib, may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bestow his never-ending mercy, on, mercy onto you. Fashahadati alayka my testimony, my witness, I testify that لَقَدْ أَكْرَبَكَ اللَّهُ that Allah has honored you right now. I testify to that, she said. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ The Prophet heard her and he said وَمَا يُدْرِيكِ What made you know? What made you know? أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَكْرَمَهُ That Allah has honored him. How do you know that Allah honored him? فَقُلْتُ I said بِأَبِي أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I free my mother and father for you, O Messenger of Allah. فَمَنْ يُكْرِمُهُ اللَّهُ Who is it that Allah is going to honor if he doesn't honor Uthman ibn Mad'un, this noble man? And as you all know, my beloved brothers and sisters, the people are shuhada'ullahi fil ard. They are the witness of Allah on this earth. She's talking about what she knows of him and what she saw of him. So she said, فَمَنْ يُكْرِمُهُ اللَّهُ If Allah doesn't honor him, who is he going to honor? فَقَالَ The messenger said to her, أَمَا هُوَ فَقَدْ جَاءَهُ الْيَقِينُ As for him, certainty has come to him. So the scholars, they respond here, those who say, فَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ That Yaqeen means a level where you reach and you... Huh? That it doesn't mean that, but it means death. This hadith is what they responded with. فَقَدْ جَاءَهُ الْيَقِينُ Certainty has come to him, meaning death. It can't be a level because he's dead. Some people say, Allah said, Fa'bud worship your Lord because they stopped worshipping Allah. They stopped praying. Huh? Sufis. They stopped praying. So when you ask them, why did you stop praying? He'll say to you, Allah, did you not say, Fa'bud worship your Lord until certainty comes to you, right? That's what he says. Until certainty comes to you. So the certainty here is meant by death. 
the evidence that the scholars use is this as for him certainty has come to him death the prophet said I hope I hope good for him I hope good for him by Allah I don't know the prophet says this a group of people say the prophet knows the unseen he knows everything I don't know وَأَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And I am the messenger of Allah. مَا يُفْعَلُ بِي I don't even know what's going to be done to me. The Prophet of Allah is saying, وَأَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ I am the messenger of Allah. I don't know مَا يُفْعَلُ بِي That which will be done to me. And that, my beloved brothers and sisters, is صدق الخوفي The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام scared of the سُوءِ العاقبة فَعَيْنُ I don't know. What Allah plans for me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the reason why he mentioned that is because it goes hand in hand with the other narration of his, which is in Sahihain bin Hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna ahadakum la ya'amalu bi'amali ahli al-jannah, hatta ma yakunu baynahu wa baynaha illa jira'a, fayasbiqu alayhi al-kitab, fayamalu bi'amali ahli al-nar, fayadkuluha, وَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعَ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابَ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا That one of you will do the action of the people of Jannah until between him and death there is a ذِرَاعَ hand span an arm span فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابَ But what was written for him precedes him فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ So then he does the action of the people of Hellfire. فَيَدْخُلُهَا And then he enters the hellfire. وَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ And one of you لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ He does the action of the people of hellfire. حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعَ Until between him and death is a arm span. فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْ الْكِتَابِ And then the qadr precedes him. فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا So he does the action of the people of Jannah and he enters it. So this hadith is exactly what the Prophet is trying to say when he says, وَمَا وَاللَّهِ مَا أَدْرِي I don't know. وَأَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَا يُفْعَلُ بِي I don't know what's going to be done to me. Some of the shurrah, they mention that the Prophet does know generally what's going to be done to him. عموماً Like in tafasil, the details and the intrinsic of it, he doesn't know alayhi salatu wasalam. He only knows what's been told to him regarding his affairs alayhi salatu wasalam. My beloved brothers and sisters, هَذَا مُعَاذِ بْنُ الْجَبَلِ here we find Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Imam al-Ulama. He is the Imam of the scholars. Wasayyidul Atqiya. The master of the pious people. Mahabibu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the one that the Prophet loves. The Prophet said to him one day, Ya Mu'ad, inni la uhibbuka. Mu'ad, I love you. The Prophet said this to him. My beloved brothers and sisters, none of us has gained that right. None of us have gained that opportunity for the Messenger of Allah to say to us, Inni la uhibbuka, I love you. You haven't gained that. You never got that opportunity. He gained the opportunity of see, seeing the Prophet. He gained the opportunity of being with the Prophet, spending time with the Prophet. And then on top of that, he got the Prophet Sallallahu heart. The Prophet said to him, Ya Mu'ad, my beloved, the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, Ya Mu'ad, O oh Mu'ad, Wallahi inni la uhibbuka, I love you. And then the Prophet said to him, فَلَا تَدَعَنَّا Do not leave off and تَقُولَ فِي دُبُرِ الصَّلَاةِ Do not leave off saying at the ending of all your salah, اللهم إني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك Say that all the time, Mu'ad. Brothers, what do we take from that? The love that you have for somebody, let it be something you call them to good and you prohibit them from evil. هذا علامة المحبة Watching your Muslim brother sinning, committing crimes, or not doing what is better than what he's doing. And saying that I love him is not the truth. Your love should be something that you save your brother from destruction, from Allah Taala's torment. Wallahi inni la uhibbuk. When the Prophet said this to Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Mu'ad radiyallahu ta'ala anhu never left it. I did it. But that's not what I want from this. This is not what I want from Mu'ad's story right now. I just wanted to show you what status he gained. But what I want from Mu'ad is the thing that he said himself. Look what Mu'adh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said. This you can find in the kitab Al-Muhtadirin. 
written by Ibn Abi Dunya. Ibn Abi Dunya, he wrote a book on the people who are on their deathbeds just before they die, things that they've said. He's got it in his Mawsu'ah. Ibn Abi Dunya. Wa Abu Nu'aym, Wa Abu Nu'aym, in his Hulyatul Awliya wa Tabqatul Asfiya, and Ibn Asakir, in his Tariq Dimashq. What is it that he said? By the way, this, as you all know, there was a ta'un, a plague, called Imwas. In English, they even call it the plague of Amwas, they call it. It was on the 6th, the 7th, 8th century. It was a plague that killed 25,000 companions and tabi'in. It was a deadly one. Ta'un was, was dangerous. And it happened in Bilad Sham. It happened in Sham. So Mu'ad was affected by it. وَنَامَ عَلَى فِرَاشِ الْمَوْتِ He was on his deathbed. وَوْفِي رَيْعَرِ شَبَابِهِ Remember Mu'ad was very young. كَانَ فِي رَيْعَرِ شَبَابِهِ He was in his youth. رضي الله تعالى قَالَ لِأَصْحَابِهِ He said to his companions, his students, and those who were around him, he said, Unduru Hal Asbaha Sabah. Look, is it still morning yet? Check for me, is it still morning? Fanadaru, they went out and they looked. Wakalu Lay Sabadu. They said, No, not yet. It's not morning yet. So he went quiet for a bit. And then he said to them again, Go and check, is it morning yet? And they came back to him and they said, Nope, it's not morning yet. And then on the third time he said to them, Go check, is it morning? And they came back and they said, No, it's not morning yet. And so they said to him after that, Mada to read what do you want, Mu'ad? What is it that you want? And then Mu'ad ibn Jabal responded by saying, A'udhu billahi, I seek refuge in Allah. Min layla, a night in which it's morning is towards the hellfire. Thumma baka, and then he cried. And then he said his famous statement, Allahumma, O Allah, innaka ta'alamu, O Allah, you know. Anni kuntu akhafuka, O Allah, you know I used to fear you. I was scared of you. وَأَنَا الْيَوْمَ أَرْجُوكَ And today I'm hoping from you. On this deathbed that I'm on, I hope from you. اللهم أو الله إنك تعلم أني ما أحببت الدنيا أو الله you know I never loved this dunya. I had no love for it. لغرس الأشجار أو الله you know I didn't love this dunya so I can plant my plant trees in this world. Or لجري الأنهار or I can pave a river or a lake. وَلَكِنْ لِضَمَئِ الْهَوَاجِرِ But the reason I loved it was fasting when the heat is high, making myself thirsty and fasting in your reason and hungry. وَمُكَابَدَةِ السَّاعَاتِ And at night time praying in your, in your, in your remembrance. وَمُزَاحَمَةِ الْعُلَمَاءِ بِالْرُكَبِ عِنْدَ حِلَقِ الذِّكْرِ And also hastening and running to the circles of knowledge with the scholars placing my knees down on the ground to be in the circles of knowledge and gardens of benefit. And then his soul left him. When he was pronouncing and uttering The same is Sufyan al-Thawri. He slept on his firash al on his deathbed. And he cried. So somebody who was visiting him came in and said to him, when they heard his crying, Ya Aba Abdullah, Atakhsha Dunubak, Abu Abdullah, talking to Sufyan al Thawri, are you scared of your sins? He took a little twig from the ground, and then he said, La wallahi, no, I'm not scared of my sins. My Sins is more belittle to me than this little twig. It's, my sins are insignificant to me. ثُمَّ بَكَى وَعَلَى صَوْتَهُ And then he cried and his voice went very loud. وَقَالْ And then he said, وَلَكِنِّي أَخَافْ But I am scared. And أُسْلَبَ الْإِيمَانَ قَبْلَ الْمَوْتِ That Iman is taken from me just before death. I am scared that I lose my Iman just before death hits me. That's what I'm scared of. Abu Naim al-Asbahani who brought it in his kitab Hiliyatul Awliya wa Tabaqatul Asfiya Al-Imam al-Dhahabi rahimahullah brings it in his Sira Alami Nubala Tariqul Islam 
both of them are info- written by Imam al-Dhahabi. Tariq al-Islam and Sir Alam al Also, Sufyan al-Thawri, Imam al-Zuhdihi was wallahi, wal-adli wal-ilmi wal-wara'a. He's scared of what my beloved brothers and sisters. A yuslab al-Iman. That the Iman is taken from his heart. Wa ala firash al-mawt and he's on his deathbed. Lama dakhala alayhi Hamad ibn Salama entered onto him one day, Sufyan al-Thawri. Hamad ibn Salama entered onto him. وَقَالَ He said to him, أَبْشِرْ يَا عَبَى عَبْدِ اللَّهِ Abu Abdullah, glad tidings, glad tidings. Hamad ibn Salama, another imam, another imam is talking to his brother, Sufyan al-Thawri. He says to him, أَبْشِرْ glad tidings. يَا عَبَى عَبْدِ اللَّهِ For what? إِنَّكَ مُقْبِلٌ عَلَى مَنْ كُنْتَ تَرْجُوهُ You're now facing and you're going to the direction of some uh, people you used to always hope to be with. The Prophet of Allah. The companions of the Prophet, you're going that direction. People you used to love and used to hope to be with them. So glad tidings. And Allah is the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَبَكَى Sufyan. Sufyan cried. وقال, and he said to Hamad ibn Salama, أَسْأَلُكَ بِاللَّهِ يَا Hamad. Hamad, I ask you by Allah. أَتَظُنُّ Do you think أَنَّ مِثْلِي يَنْجُو مِنَ النَّارِ Somebody like me will be saved from the hellfire. Do you think so? He's asked, he asked him that question. Al Imam al Shafi'i, Rahimahullah, Imam al Alam, the great noble Imam, Lama Mata ala Farash al Lama Kana ala Farash al Moti, when he was on his deathbed, Dakala alayhi tilmidu, his noble student came in. Ismail ibn Yahya al Muzani, he entered onto his teacher. And when he entered onto Imam al Shafi'i, he said to him, كيف أصبحت يا أبا عبد الله How is your morning? How have you? How are you? And he said to him, أصبحت من الدنيا راحلا I have become one who is departing from this world وللإخوان مفارقا And one who is departing from his brothers ولعمل ملاقيا One who is going to meet his actions that he's put forth وَلِكَأْسِ الْمَنِيَّةِ شَارِبًا And one who's going to taste the cup of death. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ وَارِدًا And one who is directed and taken towards Allah تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى وَلَا أَدِّرِي And I don't know. أَتَصِيرُ رُوحِي That my soul will it be taken to إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ فَأُهَنِّئُهَا So I can give it glad tidings. Or is it going to be taken to the hellfire? فَأُعَزِّيَهَا So then I could not give it glad tidings. Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Bila Mudafa, without an argument. Without an argument. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Ghani Yun Ali Tarif, for me to even describe and to tell you who he is, huh? is an insult. It's an insult. There's no Ghani. He's rich from anyone defining and explaining who he is. He said, Al Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Al Khawfu Fiya. Of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and Su'ul Qat Khatima, an evil ending, Yamna'uni prevents me from Min Akli Ta'ami wa Sharab, eating and drinking. Fala Ashtahi, I don't have no desires to eat and I have no desires to drink. So, as I said before, my beloved brothers and sisters, Fal Khawfu min Su'ul Khatima, the fear of an evil ending, Mazaka Kulubu Sadiqin, the people who are truthful and believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. This is what ripped their hearts. This is what distressed them and made them sad and depressed. Our Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, Nabiullah Muhammad, our role model, He used to stand in front of Allah. And the Prophet will cry, The fear that he has and how he is scared of Allah. وتعالى. As it's narrated in a Sahih, authentically narrated, Al Imam Abdullah Mubarak narrated in Kitab al Zuhd, Abu Ubaid, Abu Ubaid Qasim al Salam, Fadail al Quran, Al Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, Abu Dawood in his Sunan, Al Nasa'iyu, Al Nawawi authenticated in Riyadh al Salihin, Hafid ibn Hajar authenticated in Fathul Bari, Al Imam ibn Rajab al Hanbali authenticated in Fathul Bari. Al Albani rahimahullah, Al Imam Al Albani, he authenticated in Sahih al Nasa'i. An Mutarrif an Abihi, that Mutarrif narrated from his father, 
He said, Atayitul Nabi, I came to the Prophet, wa huwa yusalli, and the Prophet was praying. Wali jawfihi azizun ka'azizil mirjali. I entered onto the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was praying. Wali jawfihi, and the Prophet's, his chest, his chest and stomach, was making the noise of when a pot is burnt and it is boiling. The Messenger وسلم, his chest was making that from the excessive crying that he was crying alayhi salatu wasalam. The third level of fear is al khawf min adab Allahi fil akhirah. Being scared of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala his punishment the day of judgment. And my beloved brothers and sisters, قَدْ خَافَهُ الصَّالِحُونَ The righteous people, they feared the punishment of Allah, the day of judgment. Rather, the prophets and the messengers were fearful than the punishment of Allah, the day of judgment. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said to our prophet, قُلْ say to them, إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ قُلْ say to them, Muhammad, that I am scared in Asaitu Rabbi, if I disobey my Lord, what am I scared of? Adaba Yawmin Azim, the punishment of the day when it's great, the day of judgment, the punishment that's going to come. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the people of Iman, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he said about them, Wayakshawna Rabbahum, Wayakhafuna Su al Hisab. They are fearful of their Lord and they're scared of a evil and Evil accountability, the day of judgment. A evil hisab, a evil accountability, that's what they're scared of. Waqala Ta'ala Allah also said about them, Wayarjuna Rahmatahu, they hope Allah's mercy, Wayakhafuna Adaba, and they are scared of his punishment. And that's because because of that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala reminded us of the punishments that He's going to make the evil people suffer from, the criminals. The wrongdoers, the things that Allah wa Taala has prepared for them, He told us in the Quran, so we become scared. Look what He said: "Lahum min fawqihim dhulal min al nar wa min tahtihim dhulal." ذلك يخوف الله به عباده يا عبادي فتقون. In another place, He says: "يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار." The day when hearts and eyes are going to be tossed and turned. وَيَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا Also Allah says إِنَّا نَحْنُ إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا قَمْطَرِيرًا So Allah gives a description of the punishment of that day and He always generally stipulates to it fear and scared. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He praised He praised the people who are scared of that day. The people who are scared of that day and spend fear of it in this world, Allah wa Taala praise them. And anyone who comes with these characteristics, they should know that they are they fall under those who Allah has praised. Wa athna Allah thana an aatiran ala man haqq hadi al khasla. فقال سبحانه وتعالى Allah says, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ Anybody who fears Allah, مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ the position of his Lord, the day of judgment, and the things that Allah is going to do to him. Anyone who's scared of it. And that fear makes him work harder to, to, to do what Allah commanded him to do and to stay away from that which Allah prohibited him from. That person is going to receive Jannatani, two Jannas. Jannatun fi dunya wa Jannatun fi akhirah. A Jannah in this world and a Jannah in the hereafter. Walidalika Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih min Hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Qalat, she said, Faqattu Rasulullah. One day, I couldn't find the Messenger of Allah. He wasn't with me. He wasn't sleeping with me. Laylatan min al-firashi faltamastuhu. I tried looking for him. Fawaqa'at yadi ala batni qadamayhi. My hand, it hit the inner part of his leg. Meaning his legs were like this, alayhi salatu wassalam. Now that he was praying, he was in the sujood. And the way your leg is when you're in the sujood is that the part in which you put on the ground is it called your soul? Are visible. So her leg, her hand hit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's 
but the qadamayhi. And scholars use this that the woman doesn't break the husband's wudu. Based on the madhab al shafi'iyya they believe that the woman can break her husband's wudu. They believe a woman breaks a man's husband's wudu. A woman breaks a man's wudu if she touches him. So this is an evidence to say that, a proof to show that no, that's not the case. But they try to use arguments. Maybe there was a something between it and. But the asal is that their legs are not covered. The asal is that the legs are not covered. So for waqa'at yadi ala batni qadamihi, my hand it hit the Prophet Sallallahu leg. Wahuwa fil masjidi and he was in the masjid. Wahuma mansubatani his legs was up. Wahuwa yaqul and the Prophet was saying, Allahumma oh Allah, a'udhu bi ridaka min sakhatik. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you being pleased from your anger. And your forgiveness from your punishment. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. I cannot, I cannot fully come with your praise. You are as you praise yourself. So the Messenger of Allah at night, the fear of the Day of Judgment, the fear of Adabullah, the punishment of Allah, it woke him up. It woke him up. And it made him go into the masjid. And it made him prostrate to Allah wa ta'ala. And it made him make this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bi ridaaka min sakhatik. Wa bi mu'afatika min uqubatik. Wa a'udhu bika mink. La uhsi thana an alik. Anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Umar, Farooq hadhi al-umma. Umar ibn al-Khattab. As al-Imam al-Bukhari narrated. Anna Umar ibn al-Khattab lamma tu'in. When Umar was wounded. Umar said. والله لو أن لي طل لو أن لي طلاع الأرض ذهب لفتديت به من عذاب الله عز وجل قبل أن أراه. If I was to have this world full of gold, I would have free. I would have given that to be freed and to be taken away from the punishment of Allah before even seeing it. If I could pay my way out of it, I would do it. Having the gold of this earth, I would have done it. These men are promised Jannah alive. They are walking on this earth and they are told you're going to enter Jannah. You are going to enter. You are going to enter Jannah. Between you and Jannah is death. And then you still don't see them having what? They're not having amn min makrillah. They're not safe from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plans. They're still scared. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةِ Their hearts are in a state of fear. We're the opposite. Don't judge me. Don't say this to me. We are. We don't want to hear anyone who tells us what's right or wrong. No. وَهَذَا عُمَرُ بْنَ عَبْدِ الْعَزِيزِ عُمَرُ بْنَ عَبْدِ الْعَزِيزِ دَخَلَ عَلَىٰ إِمْرَأَتِهِ فَاطِمَةِ عُمَرُ بْنَ عَبْدِ الْعَزِيزِ entered onto his wife Fatima. And I want you to brothers pay attention. I'm going to instruct you and inshallah ta'ala advise you to read a book. It's called Seerah to Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, written by Ibn al-Jawzi. Ibn al-Jawzi actually wrote a thick, thick, thick volume. Thick, very thick. On the biography of Ibn Abdul Aziz. Go and read it, inshallah ta'ala. But one of the things that were mentioned was Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was married to a woman by the name of Fatima bint Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Are you with me? She was a daughter of who? Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Fatima was, her father was a leader. Her brother Suleiman was a leader. And after Umar ibn Abdul Aziz died, the person who took right after him was Yazid ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, her brother. And pay attention to this. When Umar ibn Abdul Aziz married Fatima bint Abdul Malik, Fatima bint Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz as soon as he took over the Khilafah, he came up to her and he said, Fatima, all the gold that your father has given you, your father Abdul Malik, all the gold he gave you, all the treasures that you owed, give it to me and I'll take it back to Baytul Bali al Muslimin. So she gave it all. Or he said, you can keep it and I'll let you go. She said, I will never choose anyone over you or anything over you. So she stayed with him. Brothers, wallahi, pay attention to this. This is to show you the women and how righteous they were. Allahu Akbar. Rabbi Allahu Ta'ala anha. May Allah be pleased with her. What did Fatima do when he took it? He took it to Bayt al-Mal al-Muslimin. 
Umar ibn Abdul Aziz died. When Umar ibn Abdul Aziz died before her, are you there? He died before her. And when he died, her brother Yazid ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan said to her, My sister, I can bring you back all your gold that your, my, your husband Umar ibn Aziz took away from you and put it in Baytul Mas. I'll bring it back for you and you can have it. And she said to him, Allahu Akbar, I am not one who is going to obey Umar ibn Abdul Aziz while he's alive and disobey him while he's dead. I'm not going to be like that. I will obey him whilst he's alive and while he's dead. She used to love him a lot. But she used to say that the Khilafah, the Khilafah when he took it and the way he, he was, it used to make her sad, her situation. Because Umar ibn Abdul Aziz turned him, the way his life was, one day he was, Fatima was sitting down and a man was with her. She wasn't wearing hijab, Fatima. She was uncovered. And a woman came in. She saw Fatima and she said to her, why is it that you're not covered? There's this man there and you're not covered. And Fatima cried and she said, Wallah. The man was cleaning the house and he was painting the house. She cried and she said, Wallah, this is nothing except Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, my husband. Hatta manzaru, the way he appeared and the way he looked. لذلك كان آخر آيات تلفظ بها The last verses Umar al-Aziz read when he was dying was تلك الدار الآخرة These are the uh, This is the آخرة Allah say نجعلها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادة We have made آخرة For the people who don't want to be high in this dunya they don't, They're not looking for leadership They're not looking for recognition They're not looking for popularity or money Allah says we made Jannah for them this and he looked at Fatima when he read it and he said, Tilka daru al akhira. Naja'aluha lil ladina la yuriduna uruwa fil ardi wala fasada wala aqibatu lil muttaqin. And this story right now here that I want to mention, it, the reason I mentioned all of that so you understand what type of people they were Fatima and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz entered onto Fatima one day. Fataraha alayha khalaqun sajid alayhi. He threw a pallium. The pallium was the arch, you know, the archbishop, the, you know, the long one that they wear, the garment that they wear, long, it's called a pallium. He threw it at her and it was worn out. So when he threw it at her, ثم ضرب على فخيرها, and he hit her on, the, on her thigh. He smacked his hand on her thigh. فقال, he said to her, يا فاطمة, لنحن ليالي دابق أنعم منا اليوم. The days of دابق that we used to live, that lifestyle that we used to live, was more fun, it was more uh, like joyful in the sense where we had money, we were living the life. So he reminded her of the life that she used to live and the kind of money and the way she lived. He reminded her and how he lived as well. So she hit him very hard. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. And she said to him, لَعَمْرِي by Allah. لَأَنْتَ الْيَوْمَ أَقْدَرُ مِنْكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ Today, you're more able to do that for us. You weren't Khalifa to Muslimin at that time. You were a governor. Now you're the leader of the Muslims and you're controlling the Muslim affairs. You can give us more of that. You can make us have this fun. She said this to him. فَقَامَ and he stood up. وَهُوَ يَقُولُ بِصَوْتٍ حَزِينٍ With a sound, a voice that was sorrow and sad. And he said to her, يَا فَاطِمَة O oh, Fatima, inni akhaf. I am scared in say to Rabbi if I disobey my Lord. I have a yawmin azim. I am scared of a severe punishment if I disobey my Lord, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. In other words, the reason why I as an individual
He said to her, Ya Fatima, O Fatima, Inni akhafu, I am scared. In say to Rabbi, if I disobey my Lord, Adab a yawmin azim, a severe punishment of the day of judgment. Fabakat Fatima. Fatima cried, Wakalit, she said, Allahumma, oh Allah, A'idhu min al nari. Allahumma, A'idhu min al nari. Oh Allah, protect him from the punishment of the hellfire. Oh Allah, protect him from the hell, the punishment of the hellfire. Al-Imam Salih ibn Abdul Qadus Al-Imam ibn Al-Qayyim reads in his Kitab Al-Fawaid page 8 that he said a line of poetry <laughs> he said da'anka ma qad kana fi zaman al-siba leave off what you used to do in your past when you were young the sins and the crimes that you committed leave it off and stay away from it wadkur dhurubaka wabki haya mudnibu and remember your sins and cry over it whenever you remember it. وَذْكُرْ And also remember مُنَاقَشَةَ الْحِسَابِ فَإِنَّهُ Remind yourself very often the accountability of the Day of Judgment and how you're going to be accounted for what you said and what you did in this world. لَا بُدَّ يُحْصَى مَا جَنَيْتَ وَيُكْتَبُ It is necessary and it will be. Every crime that you have did and everything you said will be have written for you. It will be on a scroll. لم ينسه الملكان حين نسيته. If you try to make yourself forget it, remember that the angels didn't forget it. بل أثبتاه rather they have solidified it and written it properly. وأنت لاهن تلعب and you were joking around and you were playing. والروح فيك وديعة and your soul is leaving you. أودعتها ستردها بالرغم منك وتسلب. Your soul is leaving you, is greeting you, and is telling you bye. It will be taken out of you, and it will also be brought back to you, for you to be accounted for everything you did and said. So my beloved brothers and sisters, Al-Khawfu, fear of Allah wa Ta'ala, is a characteristic of Ibadullah Salihin. And anyone who misses this opportunity of being from the righteous people by not being scared of Allah wa Taala and what Allah promises the day of judgment, then that person has truly not tasted the true essence and the true sweetness of Al-Iman. So inshallah ta'ala, we'll stop there bi al kareem And next lesson inshallah ta'ala, we're going to carry on the third type of the types of ibadah there is. الرجاء هوب سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليك